For almost five months now, government forces have been operating in eastern Ukraine and the pummeling of cities with heavy artillery carries on. And the latest attack on Friday hit a square near a railway station in the city of Donetsk, a stronghold of anti-government fighters. A bus and a car were completely burnt out, but luckily no one was killed. And elsewhere, soldiers who have been encircled for a week near the city of Ilovask have now been allowed to leave through a humanitarian corridor. The first 28 troops have already made their way out and joined up with the National Guard. Earlier, President Putin called on militias to let the soldiers out of the combat zone to avoid pointless casualties. Anti-Kiev fighters have been making advances in recent weeks, propped up by a growing number of foreign volunteers, as RT's Paula Sleer reports. It's our war. It's uh, everybody's war. It's every European's war. And more and more overseas fighters are signing up for joining the anti-Kiev troops in eastern Ukraine. The war is slowly advancing into Donetsk city centre. This used to be a hardware store, but like a growing number of soft targets around the city, it has been reduced to rubble. A growing number of Europeans are saying enough is enough and are backing their words up with action. 25-year-old Nicola was a professional soldier with the elite French mountain troops for five years. Now he's putting his skills to good use in Ukraine. Alongside a contingent of other foreign volunteers, he's training anti-government forces in urban guerrilla warfare. These are people's militias. These are not mercenaries or professional soldiers, so they need instruction. They really have the motivation, whereas the Kiev army, which is a kind of puppet of NATO, they don't have any motivation whatsoever, and they do not really know why they are fighting and against whom they are fighting. So that is our main strength. The aid is also symbolic. For many of these people from the West, it's the first time to come defend what is considered by Western governments a bad cause or the bad guy's cause. So it's very important to show that people from the West are distinct from their governments and they are ready to come and fight and risk their lives to defend another world. It's not just France. Volunteers from Serbia, Spain, Germany, Poland, Israel and the United Kingdom are in Donetsk on the front line. Uh, we believe that Ukrainian army will not be able to sustain uh, winter or, or even fall because each, each day that goes by, they lose money, they lose motivation, they lose manpower, they lose uh, ammo, they, they lose. So each day that goes by, they grow weaker, we grow stronger. Europe now finds itself in between a rock and a hard place. What to do as more of its young men sign up to fight against its ally? Legally, we don't see what the French government can do to us, because, first of all, we're not paid, so we're not mercenaries. We're not terrorists, we're not jihadists, and of course, it's a mission of information. It's a political mission. It's a mission of soft power. A mission that's growing stronger as a brigade of Western volunteers is put together. Under the name of a united continent, they're showing just how disunited Europe is on the question of Ukraine. Paulus Lear RT, Donetsk, Eastern Ukraine.